Today we're making real Brazilian picanha. Picanha is just a top sirloin cap. Any good butcher will know what it is. That's what it looks like. And this one, they normally come in two to three pounds. This one's two and a half pounds. And what we're going to do today is we're going to dry brine it and then we're going to spin it like they do traditionally um, in the Brazilian steakhouses. And if you haven't been to a Brazilian steakhouse, I highly recommend going, trying their pecan and their chimichurri sauce and the salad bars. It's a good experience. So I've got my pecania here with a nice little fat cap on it, and I'm going to cut it into inch and a half strips with the grain. So I'm going to get three out of this. Now the recipe for this is below in the comments section. And I've got one tablespoon of salt. That's the right amount for this two pound, two and a half pound pecania. And this is a diamond kosher salt. And I'm going to get it all over the meat evenly. Cover all sides. I'm going to just put it on a rack, a raised rack. This dry brine will work with any kind of steak. There, I like that a lot. So I'm spacing them out evenly on the raised rack and I'm going to brine this, dry brine it for 24 hours. Okay, so my brine pecania sat in the fridge with the salt on overnight, uncovered, and uh, the moisture comes out and creates a crust and then it goes back in and makes a really super tender steak. You should try this with your uh, prime rib too. Just remember with the diamond kosher salt, it's half a tablespoon per pound of pecania. This is for boneless too. And if you're going with the Morton's kosher, um, it's gonna be like a teaspoon per pound. So I've started my chimney here. Now we're gonna go real Brazilian style on this. You can see what that looks like. <clears throat> I'm going on a rotisserie and this is my Joe tisserie and I've just got my chute going. We're going to hook on this. Now if you don't have a Kamado Joe and a Joe tisserie and something fancy um, you can go with skewers and you're just going to skewer it through the fat part into a, a moon like a half moon shape. So I'm going to take the first one and just go through the fat, fat side out, just like that, and stick it into the prongs. Now I've got lots of rotisseries, so these smaller prongs are from another one. Just add another prong, skewer it through. Add another prong and I'll just put the last prong on. Just to hold everything securely. So that's what it looks like. You can see the fat on the outside. Now to start my shoot, I went with a, a B and B charcoal lump. And to start it, I always use a torch, just like that on the bottom. I never use any kind of chemical starter or newspaper or anything like that. I know it's kind of strange that we're going to be cooking steak on a rotisserie. You can see how that's going right now. No, no deflector plates or anything, just in we go. And I'm going to go pretty hot and fast on this. You know how to cook a steak. So if you were skewering this and you didn't have the rotisserie, you'd do it exactly the same way. You'd probably fit two on one of these. Oh yeah, this is dried out nicely. I'm going to pepper this just the way that I like. Fresh cracked pepper. I like that. Now just for fun, we could put a, uh, a temp spike in. This is a Bluetooth wireless 
probe, like a meter, but only better. And there's a little line there and you just bury it right up. So my temperature that I like is 133 degrees. So you can see the spike in there now, like that. And I've buried it in, so it's going to get the meat temperature, which says it's uh, 60 degrees right now, because it's been sitting out for a few minutes, right? And then the ambient temperature is going to come from the black part right there. If you're looking for a gift for somebody, this temp spike, um, I'm a huge fan because I've had this Thermapen, which is extremely accurate, for over 15 years now, and it's never let me down. It's the first thing that goes in my suitcase. So here we go. I'm going to put this in. Turn the rotisserie on, check it. And now I'm going with the direct heat. There's no deflectors or anything in there. A direct heat. And we're cooking it just like a steak. So I want some nice, some nice high heat on the fat because I want to render some of that out. So this is going to take probably 15, 20 minutes, could be half an hour. It all depends on the temperature you're cooking this in, the lump you're using. This is true Brazilian style, doing it like this on a rotisserie. When you go to a Brazilian restaurant, we have one here in Sarasota called Rodizio's, and they will spin it on a rotisserie, and then the gauchos, which is like a, a cowboy, they'll come by, and you have a wooden block, green on the top, red on the bottom, and as long as you've got green, they'll just keep on bringing you meat. And you've got salad bar and stuff, and that's what we're going to do tonight here, but this is going to be really good. This is stepping it up a notch with this uh, dry brine picanha and over really good charcoal. So I'll just let this go for a bit. That spun around indirect with no heat deflector at about 400, 450 degrees for 25 minutes. And the internal right now is 133. So we'll take this off. And I didn't add smoke, and this is why. You're going to see there's so much smoke from Pecania um, because of the fat. The smell is fantastic. That is perfectly cooked. They wouldn't have the clamps. They would just go like this, put it on a board, and just slice it off right at your table. And they would give you some little tongs to take what you like. I'll take my probe out, and I'm going to put the probe into the dishwasher after it cools. There you go. I've got my meat off. Cooked perfectly. Which one do you want to jump into? That one. That's some nice looking fat right there. So what you want to do is you want to put this onto a plate, tent it, and let it sit for five minutes to let the juices pull back in. But I'm going to cut into this one right here. Wow. That's Brazilian picanha. The dry brine does an amazing job on keeping everything super moist. I've got some crispy fat there. It's perfect. I've got some chimichurri sauce. Um, the recipe for my chimichurri sauce is below in the comments section. Perfect. Cheers. Thanks for watching.